Hi there, Scorpios. Welcome to your April 2018 tarot reading. And um, first of all, I want to apologize for not being able to get in touch with you guys for January, February, March. So um, I was just going through too many changes at work and in the home situation, so I, I could not do the videos um, without you know further delays. Um, we're going to get into your reading for this month. And uh, the way that these readings are uh, conducted is um, I'm going to pull out four important messages for you guys. And then we're going to talk about them in depth. And we're going to talk about how these messages, uh, what areas of your life these messages are coming through in, okay? So the first message here, um, I have longing for simpler times. And uh, this is something I feel more so, especially when it comes to your communication and your interaction with other people. Wanting people to, you know, show social niceties, wanting people to, you know, have like basic courtesy rather than um, them feeling like, you know, they're too busy all the time. Uh, too busy to, to, to look you in the eye, too busy to keep a conversation going, too busy to even acknowledge that uh, you are there or that, you know, there, that there are other people around them. So I feel like, you know, wanting to revert back to a simpler time, wanting to, it, it's like idealizing um, a, a specific, you know, past, idealizing a time when we weren't so inundated with technology and we had more face-to-face more cordial, more uh, deliberate communication. So that's more in the communication sector, how other people um, interact with you, how you deal with other people. And also, um, I feel like this is playing out in, in the work front, in the way that you communicate with people. The second message here, um, this is a relationship fixer-upper. This is somebody who is a handy man and is constantly called in to fix problems or take it upon themselves to fix problems even though you know it's not uh, warranted or even though it's, uh, it's not required of you or asked of you, okay? You can't help yourself, you're a fixer and uh, it's almost like intuitively you pick up you know, signs of distress and you go wherever it's needed. Intuitively, you just pick it up and so I feel like this is especially um, coming in in relationship, okay? More than anything, it's relationship. Because in relationships, when you are emotionally invested in another person, that's when you give it your all, and that's when you care, and that's when you feel this urge to do something, to fix things, okay? At work, if it doesn't concern you too much, you can turn a blind eye. You know how to do that. You know how to put on, you know, your blinders. But when you're emotionally invested in a situation or a person, it's really hard for you to let things slide. Uh, the third message that I have here is everything is so open-ended, okay? Everything is just like multiple solutions to a problem. Uh, lack of consensus, uh, lack of agreement, lack of uh, uh, resolution. So... It's Mercury retrograde. I mean, I expect to see this, um, and I'm actually surprised that it didn't come out for a lot of signs. But I feel it is something that water signs are in particular dealing with, okay? Mainly because the retrograde period is happening in a fellow uh, fire sign in Aries. So Aries deals with, you know, uh, impulses. Um, I almost want to say like lack of patience and how that can also affect the way we communicate, the way we do things, the way we finalize things, and it might have not produce the best outcome. And so for you water signs, you're dealing with this lack of resolution, and I feel like it's a time for you to revisit these issues, and you yourself have to be the ones to finalize things. Um, that's in work and also in your relationship sector. Uh, the last message here, what I have is uh, conflict avoidance, okay? Um, and I feel almost like you're really, really hesitant about saying yes or no. And this is not like you. You're, you're careful and you're methodical and you're cautious, yes. But you usually have an idea as to, you know, 
yes or no? How do I feel about this? What do I want ideally to happen? But I feel like there's a lot of、um, things here that indicates to me all over the place that you are hesitant to give、um, an opinion. You're hesitant about revealing your cards. You're hesitant about. Uh, giving a,、um, a a final say because you're afraid of conflict. So let's just talk about a few things, okay? The first, so I'm gonna talk about those messages, but、um, let me just summarize everything that I'm feeling here. The first thing that、um, I want to say is the spread here, the emphasis, and the emphasis basically deals with.、Um, The the North Node and the 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 North Node is generally you know the person that you aspire to be the person that you aim to be and the per, the per, the the lessons that you want to be learning in this lifetime.、Um, I have a very strong Aquarius energy. It shows up here as the Star, and the Star is the card of Aquarius. And the thing about Aquarius people is that. They break rules. They don't really obey rules and order.、Uh, they know how to think for themselves. They pride themselves so strongly on their independence that they would rather figure out a solution by themselves, even if it means reinventing the wheel, rather than following、um, a path that has already been trailblazed for them. And so, they want to be the one to, you know. Arrive at their own solutions to do things、um, their own way, and not have to con、um, not have to conform to any type of rules, regulation, procedures, protocol, unless unless they see merit in it, and then unless they're the ones that came up with it. So they're very very efficient. They're very streamlined. They do things, and、uh, they always want the fastest, the most. Rational or the most、um, efficient way to get from A to B, and so they often cut corners. And it's not about being careless or being sloppy. They cut corners because with Aquarius people,、uh, they understand things out of the blue. So you can tell them one thing from that one piece of information, they can glean like ten things. So. They know how to jump to conclusions super fast, and not every sign has this skill. But I feel like with、uh, the air signs, they're just really, really good at this. You tell them one thing, they already can, you know, line up their ducks in a row and arrive at a solution. So I feel like you're dealing with people who are trailblazers, who are rule breakers, and they don't really follow the rules. Okay, they don't follow the rules. They they beat to their own drums, and、um, if they were fenced in, if someone tells them they you have to do this, you have to do that, they're not going to do it. So you're dealing with people who break rules. You're dealing with people who are nonconformists, and it makes you very, 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 very nervous. It makes you uncomfortable that these rules are in place, but for whatever reason. Other people are not adhering to them, so I feel like you guys are a little bit outside of your element this month, mainly because what of what you perceive to be careless and reckless, but it is not carelessness. It is not recklessness. There are people that abuse the rules, mainly because you know they're lazy, they're sloppy, they.、Um, They don't really understand the the full extent of the rules because you know rules the way they're written is legal jargon, so it can be very confusing. So you have those people, you have those people, and those people exist everywhere. They're lot sloppy, they're lazy, they don't really dig deeper to to figure out exactly what the rules stipulates. They break rules because they don't know any better. Okay, and you you have those too. You have those people as well. And those are the people when they do things, you kind of like look over their shoulders, or you you they're the ones that you don't trust. And so you're using your experience with those people. They break rules. They're、um, irresponsible and reckless and sloppy. And now you're like, okay, everyone that breaks rules is like that, irresponsible, reckless, and sloppy. However, you're ascending now. 
Scorpios. You're in a really, really good space with Jupiter in your sign. You're ascending. The caliber and the quality of the people that you're going to meet from now until, you know, October, all through 2018, it's, it's a higher vibration. It's a higher frequency. And you're dealing with people who are not sloppy, who are not careless, who get things done. And I feel like they're ahead of the game. They're fast. They're quick in the way they analyze situation, in the way they jump to conclusions, in the way that they do things. And so they're going to break rules mainly because they understand there isn't any validity to them. Some rules are outdated. You also have to take into that, that into account. Some rules are outdated. They're just, you know, not relevant for the times that we're living in, for the things that we're doing right now. And they're making you nervous because once again, you're using that, that old paradigm. People who break rules are sloppy, are irresponsible, are reckless. You're using that paradigm, that, that mindset to apply to this latter group. And this latter group, it, it's, it, that's not the right assessment. And so my advice for you here is learn to think for yourself. Learn to think outside of the box. Learn to ask yourself as well, why is this rule implemented? Why is it implemented? Not just, you know, say like, okay, uh, section 3.9 under, you know, this stipulation, they, it states that. No. Learn to interpret it yourself. Learn to understand exactly why. What is the reason for it? And it's going to make your life a lot easier. So don't filter it through that legal jargon. Don't filter it through, well, the law says this, you know, uh, the book says that, the, the regulation says this, protocol says this. Learn to figure out exactly why it, 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 why it was communicated in that way or why it was written that way, or why it was uh, put in place to begin with. What is it trying to prevent? And then you also need to think as well. With every rule, every law that is in place, um, there are also situations that are outliers, situations that don't apply, and situations that are, I want to say, um, exceptions, you know. Because, you know, laws are created by humans, okay? And we're, we're prone to human error. And so there are also, you know, outliers and exceptions in every single situation. So use your mind, use your mind properly and uh, don't fear it. I feel like many of you are always operating from a place of fear, fearing mistakes, fearing like, oh, I didn't do that to the best of my capabilities because you yourself are very perfectionistic. And you're also thinking as well, you know, I don't want to um, put my own uh, interpretation in it and lead somebody astray because you're trying to do the right thing. But the right thing is for you to use your God-given talents because many of you are very, very smart uh, to kind of interpret the laws, to interpret these rules and see if they're still relevant. And then, you know, um, I feel like many of you, you're bogged down by your emotions. You're bogged down by this, oh, I'm really fearful about making mistakes. I'm really fearful about, you know, um, doing it wrong or shortchanging somebody but not giving them the, the legal spiel. And then I'm also sensing many of you are using these emotional hang-ups that you have in dealing with people who are rule breakers who are reckless with and and then you know giving uh, ascribing those qualities to the new groups of people who are responsible and they they like to break rules mainly because they know there is a better way to do things so this whole concept about you know um this aquarius influence if you have an aquarius in your life if you have a trailblazer, uh, a rule breaker, uh, a little bit of a rebel in your midst, whoever that might be, and you know, even if you have just an Aquarius, uh, an Aquarius moon, sun, or rising sign, they're there to teach you a very, very important lesson. And I feel like this person has been 
in the picture, you know, possibly since the beginning of the year. And you're showing or you're seeing some really admirable qualities about them, but they make you very nervous. The way they are, they're unconventional. They're really, really independent, which is something that many of you wish, a quality you wish you possess. And I feel like you look at them and you're just like, wow, that person is, is you know, um, they don't need anybody. And that makes you nervous. That makes you very, very nervous. So the way that they are, everything about them just makes you very, very nervous. But you have a great deal of respect for this person's intelligence, for this person's ability to say, like, you know, I'm not going to bandwagon. I have my own thoughts. I have my own opinions. I have my own ideas and my own way of doing things. And you really admire this person's capabilities and their intelligence. But once again, ascribing qualities that this person doesn't possess based on a similar experience from your past. So you need to learn to look at things through a fresh pair of eyes, through a fresh filter, okay? Scorpios, get rid of your uh, filter. Get rid of, you know, whatever paradigm you've been looking at your life, you kind of need to rip off that, that filter. You need to throw that away. You need to look at situations with a new pair of eyes. And you need to not let your former biases um, affect what you're dealing with right now, okay? This is a brand new page, brand new chapter in your life um, this year. And so you have really, really great potential to make it, you know, kind of like that, that, that best year that it can be, okay, because you have some great blessings coming in, but you just need, honestly, you just need to let go of some past BS, and I, I want to say, like, things you've been telling yourself that don't really, I want to say they're not even applicable anymore, they're outdated, and then things that you've been telling yourself to kind of like, um, to rationalize and, 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 you know, allow you to accept a situation, even when that situation is no longer relevant, you need to let go of that BS, okay? So this is kind of like, rip off that filter, rip off that band-aid, and just look at your life, look at your life through a different lens. And I know it's really difficult for us to do that as a fixed sign, okay? It, it, it's really difficult. But if you don't do this, I see a lot of conflict. I see a lot of stagnation. And I see a lot of just, uh, you know, the, these messages screaming out. You need to think outside the box. You need to do things differently, okay? You need to just kind of let some things go. So, um... Simpler times. This is the first message here. So Scorpios, simpler times. I'm thinking about, you know, the, the 1950s, okay? And um, American lifestyle, 1950s, you know, where the women wear, dr wear dresses and the men, you know, they wear the, the suit. And there's this gender division of labor and, you know, the, the whole environment is still very much intact. So whatever idyllic um, messages you can glean from the 1950s, um, the way it's portrayed on the radio, the way it's portrayed on TV, that type of a nuclear family unit, okay? And, you know, we go to work, we have like, um, we, we have banter with our coworkers. And everyone is, you know, very polished and clean and just um, really, really nice. So everything has this really nice, proper, clean veneer to it, okay? And simpler times, just, um, I, I feel like when you think about that, it, it takes you back to that moment in time where we say hi to strangers on the street, where people clean up after their dogs, where the streets are nice and, you know, clean and, and everything functions, right? The, the the garbage man comes and pick up your trash on time. The parks are clean. Um, it's not too crowded, you know, so on a hot day you go to the beach, there's still space between you and the next family that's enjoying the beach. So simpler times, when things were a little bit more laid back, 
when people had time to really interact with each other, when life wasn't crazy, and when technology didn't take over. So I'm feeling many of you this Aquarian energy as well. Uh, that makes you nervous. Aquarius is ruled by, you know, electricity. It's ruled by innovation and inventions as well. So for whatever reason, in whatever capacity you are dealing with the world and working, there is this sense of like technology taking over. You're inundated with so much technology. Your brain is kind of fried. You're longing for this simpler time, this simpler moment in time when we can go to the beach and not bring our phone, not have to worry about, you know, sand getting into our smartphones, not having to worry about, you know, taking a gazillion pictures for uh, Instagram and not worrying about like, um, you know, not being distracted, just sitting at the beach, enjoying the waves, and you know, just having a moment of peace, and spending this quality time with your family, and um, things like that. So, it's a very idealistic concept, but I feel like many of you are clinging to that. Okay, you're just like, I wish things were different. I wish you know this this. Um, I, I wish we can have this revival. I wish we can have. Um, we can return to the simpler times. And I also feel like, you know, that's just the, what you're longing for when you interact with other people. You want people to be nice. You want people to be kind. And you want people to respect their elders. You want people to, you know, um, listen to one another and then have opportunities to engage if they don't agree. But, you know, they don't tear each other down with name calling, with um, inappropriate, you know, just inappropriate memes. And then I also feel as if, you know, that, that family unit that uh, where parents kind of are the obeyed figure, where kids don't talk back to their parents, or at least, you know, they still rely on their parents as the source of information, as a source of news, rather than talking back to their parents or, you know, refuting what their parents are telling them. So wanting that nuclear family unit, the strength in that, but also the, in a way, the gender division of labor when it comes to child rearing, and also the, the hierarchy when it comes to the family unit as well. And so I see a lot of things here that indicate to me structure, rigidity, but then again, I'm an Aquarius. For you guys, I feel like it, it denotes, you know, yes, you know that things are rigid and, and, and a little bit stagnant, but it denotes stability, it denotes security, and it denotes certainty. And these are the things that make you feel very, very safe and very secure. And that's what you're really longing for, and you're not getting it in your work environment. You're not getting it in your relationships. And so you're pining for these simpler times. I see for many of you, in your relationship, there's almost this sense of reverse, like, gender roles. So for those of you who are, you know, in a heterosexual relationship, um, I see some hang-ups here about, you know, the woman providing for the man. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I feel like some of you think there's something wrong with that. Okay? So, it, it's almost like discrepancies in earning. Um, the woman making a lot more, she has to take care of the guy in that relationship. And then I also feel for many of you, as the man, you're just like, I want to be the breadwinner, but your significant other, your girlfriend, your wife, is super, super independent, super independent, and they don't want to be taken care of. And so there's this um, sense of wanting to have that traditional unit, but you're naturally attracted to people or situations or circumstances that defy, you know, the, the structure that you're trying to create. And then I also feel a lot of same-sex couples as well. Um, where there is also, you know, this sense of like um, having a, a, a partner and it doesn't even have to be, you know, heterosexual or it doesn't even have to be like same-sex couple. Having a partner that is just a lot more independent, 
you know, like on the weekends you want to cuddle in bed with them, but they have like a gazillion things that they're they're doing. Their lives it seems like it's really taking off. They have a lot of things happening, and they're trying to juggle and they're trying to manage. But they're happily doing it. They're not stressed out. And I feel like you're a little bit stressed out. Mainly because they're not there in the picture. You're stressed out trying to be the fixer-upper in this relationship because of these prescribed roles that you feel you should fall into. And so I see you putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on yourself. I see you as well um, managing a relationship. And um, I see many of you are working, working really, 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 really hard. Um, to maintain a relationship. If you are in a relationship with an air sign, okay, Aquarius, Gemini, Libra, I see a lack of reciprocity here. Um, feelings are not, it, it's, it's almost like we're not on the same page with our feelings. So Scorpio, if you are dating a uh, an air sign, excuse me, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra, I just feel like you're putting in a lot of the work. I feel like you're you're really busy. And you're busy maintaining your life, maintaining the relationship. They're busy with their own life. So it seems like there's a discrepancy between what you're putting in to maintain the relationship versus what they're putting in. Okay? Make sure they're on the same page with you. Otherwise, see your way out because you're. I, I don't see reciprocity. I just don't see it. They care about you, yes, but then they also care about other things. So if you're working a lot, hustling for a relationship, um, you just need to know if, you know, ask yourself if it's, if it's worth it. If you are in a relationship with a fire sign or a water sign, so Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, you're doing a lot, a lot of maintenance. You're bringing work home. You're really struggling. And I, I see like a geographical distance between you and the fire sign and also between you and the air sign. Um, and then, you know, with that water sign, there is great, great, great rapport. But your partner, for some reason, um, financially, they might be under the weather. Financially, they might be in a tough, sticky situation. They're not very stable financially. And so I feel like, you know, you are doing a lot for your partner. You're trying to kind of like uh, be that fixer upper in your relationship. You just need to ask yourself if your partner is contributing as much. Is it, or are they, you know, um, making an effort? Do you think they're making an effort? Or do you, are you only hoping that they're making the effort? So kind of, you know, rip out that gauze pad that you have over your eyes and try to figure out, am I doing this because they gave me concrete promises that they're going to reciprocate when things get better? Or am I doing this in the hopes, because I'm so in love with them, that they're going to reciprocate once things get better? Intention and promises, okay? Those are, are different things. And then also wishful thinking and whatever it is that they're promising you. Bottom line, make sure your partner's on board, okay? Because I see you uh, doing a lot and I, I just feel like it's not fair to you, Scorpios. Uh, third message here, open-ended. Everything is open-ended. Everything is a discussion. There isn't a final solution to this, okay, and you're tired of it, I, I feel many of you are just like, and you know, this is something about fixed signs, and uh, Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpios, the thing about fixed signs is that we want certainty, um, when we ask a, a question, do you want to eat this or that, we expect like a, a simple, concise answer, okay, and I feel like with every, with a partner, this is a partner here that you're dealing with, you're not able to get that. And so you're not, it, it, you're dealing with someone who's very evasive. They're not giving you a straightforward answer. So if you ask them, you know, do they, do you love me? Rather than saying yes or no, you know, saying like, no, I don't love you. Okay, let's break up. 
then it's done and it, it's done and over with. And then if they're, you're asking them, you know, like, do you love me? They'll, they'll say yes. And then you feel like, okay, in that case, all the work that I'm doing is fine because you love me and I love you and we can be together. But then they're giving you like, why are you asking me? You know, they're giving you, they're, they're throwing it back at you. Or they're asking you like, well, what do you think? And it's like, we're back to square one. We're answering a question with a question. So you have to be a little bit more, I want to say like adamant about what you're asking and what answer you're looking for. Okay, so if you're looking for a yes or no, you need to tell them like, do you love me, yes or no? Do you want to be with me, yes or no? Do we want to have children, yes or no? Because all of these things that are left open-ended, it just doesn't really give you that satisfaction. And it's not allowing you to make plans. It's not allowing you to free yourself if you need to or stay if you feel it's worth it. So you have a partner here. And I feel like there are harsh words exchanged between the two of you possibly for this month. I also feel like your partner is very, very unhappy with whatever circumstances they're dealing with in their own lives, okay? Their part, your partner is dealing with his or her own emotional turmoil. And so if you're asking them, I feel like they're going to be frustrated. And um, either way, I just feel like, you know, they're, you're, you're doing a lot. And they're so wrapped up in themselves, just so wrapped up in themselves that they don't see the contributions that you're putting in. They only see what's in front of them, what they're dealing with, their problems, their issues. And a lot of it, honestly, is self-created. So their issues, their problem, their family situation, their living arrangement, their financial circumstances, their work that they might be unhappy with. They're not really looking at all the things that you're doing behind the scenes to maintain a relationship. And so... Once again, ask yourself, you know, you, you need a definitive answer from your partner. And uh, I see like communication that is very divisive. And communication, that's not really communication. It's like you and your partner are talking. You're both talking, but you're talking about different things. You're talking about different things, like operating from different wavelengths, processing information very differently. So you are talking about the same topic, but you're not really seeing each other and you're not really understanding each other. So my advice for you is Scorpio. Um, and this is something I've noticed recently with a lot of the Scorpios that I've dealt with. Um, a lot of the times I feel like when someone says something and it might offend you, your walls go up and then rather than looking at them through you know an objective lens i feel like you might become a little bit too defensive because by that time your emotions get worked up you know and you're very calm you rarely yell you know you're, you're calm and, and very even keel but whenever you get defensive that's when you stop listening. That's when you look at this person that you're interacting with and you're just like, you're out to get me. And then you start to nitpick at the things that they're saying because your narrative states that, oh, this person is, you know, uh, trying to attack me or whatever. And, and so listen to what is being said. Listen to the intention and honestly, listen to the message that they're trying to deliver and when you feel like okay they're you know um, if you're feeling defensive if anybody in any circumstances uh, hears something and it makes them feel defensive there's some truth to it so that's just the bottom line so have more meaningful communication okay work at communication and I know it's Mercury retrograde but it is really important for us to try to work through communication issues and to really listen to the other person. Really listen. Really, really sit there and listen. Um, so the last thing here, conflict avoidance. 
And um, conflict avoidance basically means, you know, you, you always have an idea about what you want to do, what your ideas are, what your plans are, and what you want to happen, what you want, what you feel is the optimal outcome. But I feel like a lot of the times you're not acting on this for whatever reason because you feel like it's a conflict of interest with what somebody else wants. You also don't want to rock the boat. You also don't want to, you know, once again, like break rules and be a cause of contention or to, to create tension in a situation because you're breaking the rules. And I feel like these fears are unwarranted, okay? Um, I don't, I, I, I don't think other people see you as someone who's purposely, you know, um, going around causing problems. So when there is a reason for you to do, to do that, because you believe something needs to be done, you know, don't shy away from that. Own up to it. And, uh, don't be afraid to ruffle a few feathers. It's going to be fine. You know, at, at least you're getting your point across and at least you're striving towards what you feel is the right solution, is the best solution, regardless of whether or not they conform to that law, that, that, that um, procedure, that protocol, or that framework, okay? Um, I'm seeing there is um, a lot of miscommunication here in the work environment. And I'm also seeing as well promises that were made were kind of rescinded. Or people that are doing really well and they're excelling are not getting the proper recognition. So I feel like there is an element here about, you know, feeling like things are not fair, feeling, feeling like you're getting the short end of the stick, or feeling like the work distribution is not fair. Um, so that's also something, you know, that, that's going to be coming in for the month of April. You are going to sail through it. What I have here in the 10th house, which deals with your career goals, goals and aspirations, okay? Uh, we have here the death card, and this is you and your element, okay, as a sign of Scorpio. You're going to triumph over things, and whatever people throw at you, you're going to be able to throw it back at them. But I also feel transformation needs to happen. Think outside the box. Think creatively. Don't get yourself stuck into, you know, a linear path when it comes to rules and regulations. You are really good at retaining uh, law and order. You're also really good at recalling, you know, certain case studies, certain legal issues, and things like that. But it is a good month for you to look outside of it and ask yourself, you know, why was it implemented in the first place? What is it trying to pre prevent? And is it still applicable in this day and time? Is it really still applicable and relevant to what I am doing right now, to the person that I'm dealing with right now? So I feel like you need to kind of uh, think for yourself. You need to leave the, the framework behind and, and, and figure out for yourself what you want to do. And this is where, you know, it, it's a little bit scary because you're going out to a situation to resolve a situation without a manual. So you need to be flexible. You need to be open-minded. And most of all, you need to understand what you're doing. So when the rules and the regulations are no longer there, what exactly are you doing? And what can you fall back on? And you can only fall back on the fact that, you know, you have to know what you really want in order for you to go out there and work without a manual, okay? Um, Scorpios, um, I feel like there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So I am also inclined to say, as with the Taurus reading, the Taurus reading, the theme is pick up the pace. They're moving too slow. And uh, unfortunately for you guys, I feel it's the same energy. Moving a little bit too slow, reacting a little bit too slowly because you're very conflicted. You're very conflicted. Um, so, you know, pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, roll with the tides, okay? Roll with the tides. It can't hurt you. It's You're in your element this month, okay? But I feel like it, it cannot hurt you. So just, you know... Work at it, okay? But more importantly, constantly ask yourself, you know, what am I trying to achieve here? And uh, why is this rule or policy put in place? 
Why is it there to begin with? What is it trying to pre prevent? Is it still relevant? Is that rule outdated or is it irrelevant? I feel like it's outdated. Okay, so I will leave you with that. Um, I wish you all the best, okay? And, uh, you know, just get through this month. I feel like the month of May is going to be a lot better, okay? So take care of yourself, Scorpios. I will talk to you guys soon. Um, I'll try to do the mid-month reading, but I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time to do it, but I'll try my very best, okay? If not for the mid-April uh, reading, I'll see you guys in May. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.